D4 for Army Recognition Editorial Team at AED 2016, the Africa Aerospace and Defense Exhibition near Pretoria, South Africa. This is an important defense exhibition. Today we make a tour to see the highlights of the show. This is an important event to unveil many defense equipment and military weapons. Protected Mobility doing defense has got various products where we support nations in the world by providing route clearance vehicles. The Husky vehicle is a well-renowned vehicle in the world today. It is designed as a mine clearing vehicle. It's got different sensors on it. Uh, this one behind me, for instance, has got metallic sensors on it. It's also got ground penetrating radar in front of the vehicle. Um, we have the two-man cab behind me here but we also have the one-man cab Husky. The autonomous vehicle is one of the new R&D programs initiated by the Americans. So the vehicle can operate in three modes. It can operate in the manned condition or the tele-operated condition or even the full autonomous mode. So the one demonstrated here at AAD operates in the full autonomous mode and it works on the principle of waypoints and breadcrumbs. So you can locate your positions and then the, the vehicle will follow that route. The Husky's got this very special feature of being field repairable. So what you see behind me is what we call a red pack. It's got the rear module there and it's got the front module here of a Husky. Now the Husky is designed in such a way that it is breakable once it detonates a mine. And between these two modules we have a special repair kit here which we call the red pack. Uh, DCD has decided to develop a range of family of vehicles. This family of vehicles consists of three vehicles. It's called the SD, which is the standard, the HD, which is the heavy duty, and then the XD, which is the extra heavy duty vehicle. The SD is the lower end of the product range, so it offers you a certain mobility and payload and protection level. And as you go up to the XD, the payload, the mobility and the protection increases. But all vehicles have got the same principle in design. It's a monocoque hull, it's a hull construction. Um, the vehicles can be transformed into any variant like an ambulance or command vehicle or even an EOD vehicle like this one showed at the exhibition. <music> Right, the LM-13 is a multi-purpose combat vehicle. Uh, it is designed for landmine protection, um, armor-piercing um, ballistic protection as well as uh, IED protection. Uh, it features a driver, a commander, uh, we can fit a turret in any configuration and also six crew at the back. The turret configurations can either be an open turret or an enclosed turret or it can be a remote weapon station which is uh, what is fitted on this current vehicle being um, exhibited here today. Yes, it's completely designed by LMT to the client specific uh, requirements. It's a monocoque hull uh, fitted on an independent suspension. Uh, the, the, the design requirement from the client was to, to be able to uh, get this vehicle inside a C-130 aircraft with the turret fitted, which is uh, what this vehicle can currently do. Um, and that is also why we went for the independent suspension as well as for the uh, additional mobility that it affords the vehicle. Yes, the standard of the vehicle is to have the, uh, the six occupants at the back, each with his own dedicated window and gun port. Uh, the gun port is located below the window to allow the, the troop also uh, vision outside so that they don't have to look through the uh, gun port itself. There's also a uh, gun port and windows at the rear so that allows for, for all round of visibility. The LM14 was designed for armor as an open personnel carrier. It can carry up to eight troops at the back and then a driver and commander at the front. 
It is also fitted with, uh, uh, with a turret at the top. Uh, in this case, it's an open turret, one-man turret, that the gunner stands through the roof of the vehicle to operate the turret. Uh, for this vehicle at AAD, uh, the turret has been fitted with a grenade launcher, uh, but it can also be fitted with a 7.62 or a 12.7 millimeter machine gun. The hatches on the, on the roof allows for additional escape routes if, if it is required for, for personnel to evacuate the vehicle and the doors uh, might be, uh, not be able to open or there is perhaps a situation where it is prevented from being opened. Uh, this is just part of a safety feature that uh, most of these vehicles have for, to allow for multiple escape routes. The LM13 uh, version currently is just a troop carrier for its multi-purpose combat vehicle configuration, although the LM14 can be configured as an armored personnel carrier, but it can also be fitted with a medical suite if you want to use it as an ambulance. This is the Braddock Mark 12 Special Forces Sniper 338 Lapua Magnum. What makes it as accurate as it is, is our barrels are not hammer forged or button, or button pulled, they're actually cut. So the cutting process allows us to get our reams and our barrels and our fluting without affecting the metallurgical property of the barrel itself, which means we have from the start to the finish metallurgical consistency through the barrel, which allows us to get sub 0.2 MOA accuracy in laboratory conditions. 50 calibers, that caliber everyone likes. It's the hard kicking gun, the heavy gun, and the big one. It takes quite a substantial bullet. This particular weapon is designed to shoot up to 2,000 meters and we have a muzzle brake to reduce the recoil that the, uh, that the sniper would feel, as well as a suppress, suppressor that we put in front of the barrel as well. Another 338. The difference between that 338 you saw over there and this particular one is that one was done in digi camo. This is my weapon. It features a Hensolt scope. Hensolt, uh, in our opinion, make the most accurate scopes uh, in the market. And we've used the Phoenix bipod, overhang bipod. Further to that, aside from our sniper rifle um, portfolio, we also do uh, tactical weapons. We do have a communications department as well. And we are now going into assisting with the anti-poaching uh, operations. This particular weapon is your standard AR, fitted with an ACOG scope. This is thermal imaging. So generally, we use this for air-to-surface sniping. We'd load up the mag and turn our thermal on and our thermal allows us to neutralize targets in specifically low light conditions and in bush. Often the, uh, the poaching guys are hiding behind bush and uh, other targets that we can't see. We can see them clearly through thermal and it allows us to do clean kills uh, should we need to do that.